agreeing on Torah validity. Disagreeing on Torah application. Many people across the broad messianic sphere of influence believe in Torah validity. They believe that this, the Torah, the Pentateuch, the five books of Moses, is valid and relevant instruction for the followers of Israel's Messiah. This is based in the Messiah's own words of Matthew 5, 17 through 19, that he came to fulfill and not abolish the law or the prophets. Moses' teaching is relevant instruction for God's people today. It is not simply old and dusty biblical history or some kind of a code of conduct just to be followed by the primitive ancient Israelites in the ancient Near East. It is something that today is to inform us about various matters of life and the human experience. So, what does this mean in the 21st century? This is where we will see an encounter across the broad messianic sphere of influence, and especially as you get more into the independent Hebrew or Hebraic roots movement, significant divergences. Some go straight to Torah with no background information, no consideration of Second Temple Judaism, modern Judaism, law-positive Protestant theological traditions, and at best would be some kind of Karite, which throughout a great deal of Jewish history, the Karites are widely recognized as dismissing the oral Torah or the oral law as having any consultative relevance. So they pretty much go straight to the text. And the Hebrew Roots Movement today is an excellent example of how you see various groups and fellowships that are doing their own thing. They just go straight to the text and they derive interpretations that generally don't even consider, at least as a matter of troubleshooting, how certain things have been interpreted and applied throughout Jewish history and law-positive Protestant traditions. And that's why you see a great deal of division and a great deal of factionalism and indeed confusion in Hebrew roots. Now, there are various others who we all have encountered in the messianic sphere of influence. They instead go hyper rabbinical. So they believe that if Yeshua of Nazareth were living today in the 21st century, he would be an Orthodox Jew, probably even a member of the Chabad. And many of them who go hyper-rabbinical will try to synthesize as many Orthodox or ultra-Orthodox interpretations and applications of the Torah with the teachings of Yeshua, Paul, etc. And many people would consider that to be a problem uh, for any number of reasons. More than anything else, how can we act as though the teachings of medieval Jewish sages are those of Yeshua and the apostles? Not saying we can't learn from the rabbis, but don't act as though we should be synthesizing all of their teachings together. The rabbis have a place, perhaps, in our deliberations on a, an issue or a difficult passage, but they should not have the place uh, by any means. And then there is the example of Messianic Judaism, contemporary Messianic Judaism. And Messianic Judaism is itself a developing movement, the modern Messianic Jewish movement going back to the late 1960s. And it has its issues as well. It is not perfect. No group of human beings is. But 
the one thing that Messianic Judaism is broadly guided by is it is guided by a Romans 9, 10, and 11 ethos of wanting to see Jewish people come to faith in Israel's Messiah. So while Torah is very important for today's Messianic Jewish movement, particularly as Jewish believers in Israel's Messiah do not have to give up their Jewish culture, Jewish traditions, Jewish heritage, and fidelity to Torah. The most important thing is Yeshua the Messiah and his completed work. Amen. And the place of non-Jewish believers in Torah is often contingent on are you called into the Messianic movement? Is God writing his commandments on your heart and mind obviously in a more conscious way than perhaps your previous church experience. And as you are being prompted to consider a number of the externals of Torah, are you growing in the internal weightier matters? And how is this preparing you perhaps to co-labor with Jewish believers in the salvation of the Jewish people and in being an outreach to your fellow Jews with the good news? So, Messianic Judaism very much is guided by an ethos of wanting to see Jewish people come to faith in Yeshua, Romans 9, 10, and 11. And once we hit that point of all Israel will be saved, Romans 11, 25, and 26, then Yeshua will return and fully restore the kingdom and reign over this planet. So because of that, because that is the huge thrust of the Messianic Jewish movement, you will definitely see a wide number of mainstream Jewish interpretations and applications going back to the Second Temple period, which were adhered to by Yeshua and the Apostles, and presumably would be followed by Yeshua and the Apostles were they living among us today. And because these mainstream interpretations and applications are followed, it much better facilitates Jewish outreach and evangelism. Uh, so, for example, uh, other than mentioning it perhaps a few times in a scholastic or an academic sense, Messianic Judaism does not have the controversy over the sacred name, the divine name yod heh vav -Heh, that is all over Hebrew roots. Yeshua the Messiah did not once speak the name yod heh vav -Heh. The name yod heh vav -Heh was spoken only once a year in Second Temple times by the high priest in the Holy of Holies. And instead, we see Yeshua and his apostles adhering to Second Temple Jewish conventions using you know, the equivalent of God or Lord, Elohim, Adonai, Kurios, Theos in the Greek scriptures. So today's Messianic Jewish movement uses God and Lord just like the Jewish community uh, in the English-speaking world does. Another big uh, issue present in Hebrew roots that is not present in Messianic Judaism, the whole calendar controversy. Hebrew roots has got XYZ number of quote-unquote restored biblical calendars. In the Messianic Jewish community, which has a stated mission of Jewish outreach and evangelism, if you know that the widest or largest number of Jewish people are going to attend your congregation during the holiday times, during the fall high holidays, Passover, etc., it's a no-brainer. You follow the mainstream Jewish rabbinical calendar. The approach to rabbinic materials in Messianic Judaism uh, is diverse. I know some people in Hebrew roots think that a lot of Messianic congregations spend an inornate amount of time reviewing the Mishnah and the Talmud and those kinds of materials, which is actually not true at all. Uh, yes, there are some people who you know, really are focused on those kinds of studies, but the approach to the rabbinic materials, at least as I have encountered in a broad swath of Messianic Judaism, tends to be not that unlike conservative or reform Judaism. Uh, the Mishnah, Tosefta, Talmud, those kinds of things. The rabbinical tradition has a place, but it's not set in stone, and it's treated more as 
commentary, history, or philosophy. So these are just a few things that we have to be aware of because I know that as we enter into the future, there's going to be more and more of a diversity of approaches and interpretations. Many of us, you watching or listening to this, many of us can agree in a general sense on Torah validity. Yes, Moses' teaching is valid and relevant instruction. I'm not just going to consider this you know, old, dusty biblical history. I'm going to consider it the living word of God informing me about matters that affect us today as his people. But in terms of Torah application, halakha, how to actually do these matters, we're going to see a lot of different uh, approaches. And to me, much of the instability much of the controversy, much of the division has come from those who have wanted to be completely cut off, completely severed from the Messianic Jewish sphere of influence. Now, perhaps some of these uh, non-Jewish Torah movements out there, they rubbed a particular Messianic Jewish leader the wrong way, 30 or 40 years ago, and so they're now going to stick it to uh, this movement. Uh, others, based on a misunderstanding of, of certain things. But if you are cut off, if you are severed from the Messianic Jewish mission of Jewish outreach, evangelism, something fully based in Romans 9, 10, and 11, if you are not even considering that Perhaps the rabbinical tradition has a consultative role to play in theology as commentary, history, philosophy. And it's not just the only body of literature that has a consultative role. The church uh, fathers of the 2nd to 4th century have a role. Uh, certainly ancient Near Eastern history, classical Greco-Roman philosophy, those have a role in terms of background and understanding the world of the Bible. But if you are completely severed from that Messianic Jewish mission, you will make severe mistakes and you will misapply the Torah because why are you doing this? Are you doing this with the intention of, well, you know, I'm more sanctified and I'm more holy than everyone else around me? Or are you doing this with the intention of facilitating the trajectory of salvation history, the Romans 11, 25, and 26 trajectory? And I know one of the big dilemmas for non-Jewish believers who you know, are, I believe, genuinely enlivened by the Holy Spirit in, you know, I need to connect to my faith heritage in Israel scriptures, and they begin partaking of blessings of Shabbat and the festivals and a kosher style of eating and getting into a discipline of regular Torah study. For so many of them, it's just all about them. It's all about me. It's all about my family. And it's not necessarily about, okay, that's great that you are experiencing a higher level of spirituality, a deeper level of, of Bible study and experience perhaps, but what are you doing this for? And so many of the Jewish believers I know, they're not opposed to non-Jewish believers genuinely embracing these things as a part of their growth and holiness. What they get upset about is when it comes time to ask that question, what contribution are you going to make to the Messianic mission? Then it's like, well, why is that important? It's like, well, are you part of the kingdom of God? Are you part of the commonwealth of Israel? And how are you, in reconnecting perhaps to the scriptures of Israel, going to contribute something to the salvation of the Jewish people? And people who are severed from that mission are more likely than not to be the cause of so much of the division and so much of the instability. And I know that it hasn't been easy for many people who are sincere believers. They're not Jewish. God has prompted them to consider the Torah, its relevancy for their lives, 
and perhaps various Messianic Jewish leaders, older leaders, have rubbed them the wrong way. But in the future, particularly when some of those leaders are no longer around, and we see, because of the state of our world, a much more decentralized body of Messiah, that's going to be the time when the rubber hits the road, and yes, the end-time saints or holy ones, as Revelation says, are known because of having a testimony of Yeshua, and they keep the commandments of God. But it, also a definite part of the end times is the restoration of Israel and the salvation of the Jewish people. And these are things that if you don't keep them in the scope of what you are doing, you are likely to fall into some of the traps of the Hebrew Roots movement. Thankfully, this is not the final part of the discussion on this. This is an ongoing discussion that we have to begin to have as we contemplate the unknown questions of our future. The people in the body of Messiah having a positive view of God's Torah, but also what that means in terms of the mission and focus of what we are to be doing as his people. I almost never do this, but there is a point that I missed from my notes. A positive orientation to mainstream Jewish interpretations and applications of the Torah does not automatically mean, anticipating some of your questions or comments, does not automatically mean an orthodox or ultra-orthodox style of Torah application. Indeed, as is easily witnessed in today's Messianic community, most Messianic Jews and Messianic non-Jewish believers do not follow an orthodox level of Torah application. Some of you have heard the term conservadox used, which means that, well, your Torah application is somewhere in the middle but leaning toward the right. Actually, many people in today's Messianic community would be better defined as being reformative. So at the left end of the spectrum, moving toward the center. So yes, things like kosher eating, kosher style of diet, it's important. Uh, but for most of the Jewish community in the West, Kosher eating is entirely optional, so you're not going to be, uh, you know, looking at every single, you know, packaged food to check for a hexure or a symbol of approval. Uh, other things like, well, you know, I went to a Messianic Jewish conference and almost no nobody was wearing seizits. That would be a common Hebrew roots uh, response, but to many non-religious Jews, if you wear fringes or seizits. You are identifying with some of the values of the Orthodox or ultra-Orthodox community, which would be an immediate turnoff. Uh, so instead, what you're more commonly going to encounter are simply talits or prayer shawls worn on Shabbat during the Shabbat service in the synagogue, as would be seen in conservative or reform Judaism. So having a place for the rabbinical tradition traditional Jewish interpretations and applications of Torah does not automatically mean orthodox or ultra-orthodox Judaism. And I think that that's very important for many non-Jewish believers to, to process, especially if your only or frequent encounter, I should say, with the Messianic community is on paper in books and articles that you read rather than in person. And this is especially true to keep in mind as in the future, there are likely to be less and less large messianic events to go to. And so people like me who have been involved with the messianic community for 27 years, I have a responsibility to convey in written form and in audio video form the experiences that I have had.
So I hope that that clarifies a few things for some of you who are thinking, you know, did McKee just say that, you know, the rabbinical tradition, okay, that's important, but is he saying that we have to be like Orthodox? No, I'm not saying that at all. And most people in today's Messianic community don't have a Torah level of application, uh, Orthodox, or for, or for that matter, even conservative sometimes. Uh, and again, this is an ongoing part of our conversation.